much fun. This is the, now the serious part of this night. Thank you. Comment, uh, welcome to our Ignite about connecting what else, language, and mathematics. Because you know, that's part of what I think a lot for every day. So um, you probably agree that learning content means that we have to learn the language of that discipline. So learning science means that we have to learn the language of science. Learning mathematics means we have to learn the language of mathematics. Isn't that right? So we have to keep thinking about how do we help students do that. And today, they have to do many of these things. They have to obtain, evaluate, communicate information. They have to know which information is the right one. They have to sift through. Um, we are in a big data stage where they have to understand which one is the right data. They, we want them to argue from evidence, not only in mathematics, but in science, in language arts. Um, we want them to construct explanations and build them so that they can argue um, and convince others. So we have to help them because they, we also want them to um, articulate their, their own ideas build on ideas of others, con uh, critique not only their own ideas, but others' ideas. So it's a lot of building on ideas. All of these uh, functions are language-rich functions that the Common Core Standards expect of all of our students. And we have to keep thinking about how do we support them in creating all that uh, language-rich environment in which they have to communicate their thinking, their reasoning. So we need to keep thinking about how do we help them in these receptive and productive language functions. Receptive meaning we have to give them access to the mathematics, comprehend the text that they're reading, the mathematics that they're reading, and ways to produce language in which they can communicate what they are thinking. And we are very good that human nature is to recognize patterns, but we have to be careful about not overgeneralizing. You know, our students do that. We do that all the time, too. No surprise. So one way in which we do that is when we think about cognates and doublets. Um, these are words that have common etymology, etymological origin. origin. Um, cognates are from different languages. Doublets are inside the same language. So let me give you some examples. This is an example of the cognates for night in all these languages. Um, these are cognates because they come from, uh, they all mean night, and they come from the Proto-Indo-European language, meaning night, right? Um, but can you recognize, this is your turn, 10 seconds, can you recognize any cognates in that paragraph? Yell them out, tell them out. Did you see any of this? Are these the cognates you, are these the cognates you recognize? Some of them, right? But then, again, we have to be careful about overgeneralizing because then there's these things called false cognates, right? Here's some examples of them. Datos means data, not date, right? Um, assistir means to attend, not to assist. Um, idioma is a language, not an idiom. So we have to be careful about not overgeneralizing and the other thing that we have to be able to do, um, thinking about mathematical practices, we have to be able to use appropriate tools strategically, as our last speaker was talking about, right? So it, Google Translate and things like that, uh, we have to be careful about that because, you know, I have a spelling checker, it came with my PC, it plainly marks for my review, my states that have a kind that I cannot see, I strike a key and type a word and wait according to it say whether I'm wrong or right, it shows me that right away. Uh, as soon as I say the mistake is made, it knows me for that too long, and I can put the error right, it's rarely ever wrong. I have run this poem through, I'm sure you're pleased to know, it's letter perfect this way, my checker told me so. <laughs> Imagine that we're trying to define. Attending precision means pay attention to definitions. And here's some examples of how things go when we try to uh, do some, some of those definitions. Um, a rectangle, this is about rectangles and squares, right? A rectangle is a quadrilateral, all four, whole, uh, all four uh, whose angles are right angles. And you can see that even though the next one is very, has a lot more words, it's not necessarily better. 
And these are eight ways in which we can state how rectangles and squares are compared. And in parentheses, you have the kind of um, statement that is made, right? So all these are all different, eight different ways in which to state something equivalent, statements about it. But what we have to do is to make sure that while a transcendent vocabulary is notable, one must be eternally careful so that the calculated objective of communication does not become ensconced in obscurity. Thank you.